Okay, so uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, talk. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the old dev tools, which are uh, exploring, debugging and optimizing your JS code like never before. I'm uh, Julien, I'm a member of the JS uh, framework team and uh, I'm glad I could uh, present you today my biggest project of the year. So don't hesitate to already uh, scan this QR code uh, or uh, open this link to access the pad where you could uh, uh, place your questions. If you have any, I will uh, answer those at the end of the presentation. So, um, when we talk about the old dev tools, or of course, uh, we need to talk about also. Um, sadly, I don't have the time to do a tutorial about old, so I <laughs> ju just a reminder about it all is the uh, component based framework. It was uh, created by the GS uh, framework, uh, framework team in order to uh, respond uh, to uh, the, ne the need of a new uh, UX uh, engine for, the for Odoo. So, um, here you have a simple example of, uh, of two old components, a uh, container and a root. Uh, it's pretty self explanatory when you read it right there. Simply consists in uh, some, uh, some span and uh, a button where you, when you click on it, it increments by, uh, by two in this case. If I take it in, uh, out of the box here, uh, it will do as, uh, as we expect uh, to. And uh, when you look at this code, it's it's pretty simple, right? If you, if you only have this file in your code base, you don't need extra tools or anything to uh, analyze it and understand w what it means. But of course, when you go into a much larger code base like in Odoo, it can become much more complicated. So, that's why we created this, this project, we chart the old dev tools. The this project consists in a uh, web extension that you could add uh, to uh, any Chromium-based uh, browser like Chrome, uh, Brave or, or anything. And all it is also available uh, on Firefox since uh, several uh, weeks. So you, s you can simply add it uh, and it will just work uh, out of the box like this. Um, and uh, never <laughs> nothing beats a live demo for this kind of tool. So I go for it right away. So. Here we are uh, in, a, in a standard uh, database, and uh, I have this uh, this three uh, this three li little buttons that I added specially for this presentation. So first of all, why w would you need some dev tools? First, first usage of dev tools would be to explore your apps. Indeed, if I if I'm wondering where these buttons are located in the code, I could try to open the standard dev tools, inspect it with the elements tab and find that these are just standard buttons, I guess. And uh, I could try to find these using uh, maybe the class in the code base, but it may be hard to find because there are a lot of instances here and maybe there's not even what I'm looking for at the moment, which is indeed the case. So you may have some difficulties to, to find this code. But now, if I open the old left tools, I can simply go there, see every component that are present in this view in the form of a tree. And I already have my cursor uh, present on this component since I just inspected it before. So here you go. You have uh, the component that uh, that's linked to uh, to these uh, these buttons, that's right uh, uh, at the reach of your hand. And uh, if you need to really find it manually uh, before, you can simply use this uh, this convenience selector, which will uh, just uh, work like the element selector of the standard dev tools, but in the old dev tools in this case. So I could. Uh, again, lined up on this component. So now that I'm here, I can <laughs> uh, I can simply uh, go right from this button to expand the source code, and here 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 I have the source code of the corresponding component, so I can easily find the path that I need to search inside the code base. It's uh, as simple as that. So if I look at it. It's called the DevTools buttons. And there you go. 
I have the dev tool button and it's template. Way easier, yeah, right? So there are lo a lot of uh, other things that you could do uh, using this view. Like, uh, for example, I of course, it will update each time you change uh, the view. Here we, we have a, l a lot of content that was uh, added uh, to the view. You can search inside of it. Like, is, uh, if I search for all the Kanban records, I have uh, this uh, fuzzy uh, search that will uh, ju work uh, just fine, uh, fine uh <laughs> for this uh, case. And uh, a lot of uh, navigations available with the, the key, the, the arrow keys, etc. Uh, a lot of menus to simplify the navigation, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now that I know how to find content in, uh, in the code, now I, I would maybe want to debug the code. So how will I do this? First of all, I could simply, uh, once again, go into the component, and uh, indeed uh, you, you could uh, place a debugger inside the source code. It will work just fine. He here, if I reload the page, I will end up post into the setup of the component, which we was what I uh, was looking for. Uh, of course, there are other ways. Uh, you could, uh, for, uh, for instance, try to uh, edit on the fly some uh, variables inside of the, the code. So here I can uh, edit uh, the message that uh, will be shown with the button, like this. And uh, it will just update right away. Okay, uh, there are a lot of things I could send to, to the console, like the, the component itself. Is, uh, if I press this button, it will end up in the console, so I could uh, once again uh, play with the variables that are inside of it. And uh, of course, uh, you could uh, store anything, uh, send anything to the console, like uh, if I want to send this specific object, I just right click, and once again, it is present as a temporary variable. Okay, uh, one, mo one more advanced feature is that you could maybe place some additional debuggers inside the compiled code of the template. This is more advanced, but I can assure you it could save you some time uh, fr from some trouble. And uh, a last way would be uh, to uh, see the, uh, the stack traits of the renders of the components. So if I uh, activate this button inside of the prof profiler tab. Anytime a render is occurring, there will be a special uh, event that will be uh, appearing in the, the console so that I cou could see the stack trace of the render and see uh, where does it come from. Here we can see it's the on-click event that was uh, intercepted inside this method that triggered the render of the overlay container which contains the rainbow mod. Okay. Um, Trace subsection is pretty much the same, but it goes into uh, more details about uh, which variable are actu actually causing the render. But it, it's more advanced and more complicated to use, so I will not go into much details for this. <laughs> okay. Now, well, uh, the the last thing you could think of. Uh, when using the, the DevTools is to optimize, actually, your apps. So in the Profiler tab, what, uh, what I could do is to start to record events. These events are really some uh, life, uh, life cycle events from the components. So here we, we can see that we re-rendered the, the overlay container to destroy both the error handler and the rebel one that was inside of it when I clicked away. Of course, uh, this will uh, this will uh, be uh, much uh, more uh, complex if I have uh, a lot of events, like when I open a new view, uh, etc. But it's uh, very convenient. You could see it uh, in, a, in a more temporal uh, way. So this view right here is not temporarily act accurate. It's more uh, hierarchy-based uh, view. But this one here is uh, really the events in the order the, the, they were triggered. And uh, so you have uh, these, uh, these li lines that uh, are separ separated for each animation frame. And uh, of course, you have uh, some uh, time indication for uh, each uh, render, which is uh, especially useful. So I will, uh, I will finish uh, this uh, with uh, a quick uh, demo of 
some uh, debugging using uh, this. So if I go into uh, the can view, for example, in uh, here uh, in project, I could start a recording event, and here's what happened. There is a lot <laughs> of renders from this progress bar, I guess. And indeed, if we look uh, at this, yeah, these are the, the components that are uh, uh, concerned here. And I, I could wonder, why, why is that so? So first, for, uh, first of all, I could see it uh, into uh, the, the internal variables. I could see that this component is observing a state, which is an element. So if I go around uh, to play, I see that each time I over a cell, there's uh, this element that is updated. OK. Now, if I go into the source code, it seems to be that this element here is linked to the fact that this, f this bar, uh, this uh, our bars is shown or not. So indeed, we, we would need a render each time this bar disappears for each, uh, each uh, row of uh, this view. But that doesn't explain why there are so much of these, even if I stay on the same line. So maybe I could try to trace the renderings here to see what's the, the real origin. And indeed, it seems to be inside uh, this function of the Gantt renderer where this uh, element is updated. And uh, if I go to see what corresponds to this overable, it's I indeed uh, the, the, the cell that is currently being overt. OK. But this is inefficient, right? If each time I hover a different cell, this is updated. That's not right. And the only use we have for this is uh, through the source code is really for the, the ID of the row that we need to check. So now that, uh, that I have all the information I need to do the fix, well, let's do it simply. So here I prepared a fix that uh, is simply to replace this element that is being observed with the actual ID of the row that we need, because it's, it's the only f information I need. This is in both the Gantt renderer and the Gantt row progress bar. And if I apply it, indeed, and reload it, the page, OK. Uh, OK, I need to remove this uh, breakpoint. Um, if I do the, this process once again, I can see that there's a lot less that's going on here. OK. So uh, now I hope you understand a bit better why uh, these tools are useful. And uh, yeah, now uh, it's time for your questions. Thanks for listening. Aucune? Non. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. Play uh, right now. Hmm? Okay. So uh, if you have some, you can uh, you can just come to me uh, directly and <laughs> and yes, I since there are no questions now, I guess uh, this uh, talk is over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>